Hey, welcome back nerds, Afino here with a commentary slash guide for the Gorgon Sisters exhibition quest. This one is quite doable, but it is also fairly annoying in its own way. Uh, first of all, I've already shot myself in the foot by bringing Mesh because the sisters, I don't know about Medusa, but Steno and Uriel will actually start draining health from female servants to heal themselves, and it's quite a lot of health they gain back. So you're better off just sticking to male servants, or, well, I'll explain that in a minute. But the problem with running male servants is that, obviously, you're fighting Steno and Uriel, and they'll charm the shit out of them. Um, if you have charmed allies on the field, they'll start using abilities. I don't know the specific conditions. The one I've encountered is the one where, if you have one charmed servant, they'll start um, reducing your max health. I've heard there are other effects you can trigger, but I was not able to get them to trigger with my team comps. Uh, that said, you don't have to use male servants. There is a third way. If you use genderless servants like uh, old Mothman Lelouch over here, you can actually cheese that mechanic. And it also takes the punch out of their NPs. Well, obviously you can't take a direct hit from Uriel, but, you know, that aside, you can keep things going for quite a while. I would recommend running supporters, though, especially star-generating supports, because... You want to pick up the pace and gain some early momentum. My strategy is to actually pop Uriel's bar first, and then... What happens is that once you do that, once you pop either of their bars, they summon Medusa. And Medusa taunts herself and gives everyone else massive damage reduction. So you pretty much have to take her out first. Getting Medusa to spawn and getting her out of the way... Uh, ...is pretty critical to winning this fight. Also, as you may have noticed, the sisters each have elemental resistances. Well, card-type resistances. Uriel has Arts, Steno has Buster, and Medusa has Quick. Now, the thing about these resistances is that when a sister dies, they will share half of their resistance with the other sisters. Meaning that as you progress through the fight, it'll be harder and harder to finish them off. When it comes to their main resistance, each of the sisters is, like, ridiculously strong. Like, you will do, like, zero damage arts hits and stuff against Uriel. So you need to mix up your card types. Another situation where uh, the Emperor here is quite useful. So, mistake number two, I bring Paul Bunyan, because I was trying to fill out my team and I had no good ideas. I was trying to stick to, like, a relatively low econ setup, because, you know, you can you could borrow a Mothman from your friends list, or you could find someone who has one and friend them. But, you know, if you do that, you obviously can't be stacking your backline with stuff like, you know, borrowed waivers and merlins. So I try to keep my backline relatively low econ. Uh, obviously, if you saw my CEs at the start, I, I cheat a little bit. I'm running like 2030s and shit, but, you know. In my opinion, 2030s, poster girls and stuff like that, they add consistency to a run. But the basic strategy, with a few modifications, can still work, even if you don't have those CEs. Obviously, gambling on a 1 in 3 chance of Amadeus eating damage is not great, but you know, you do what you can. Also, <laughs> I find out something really strange here. You remember that drain effect I talked about? Um, if you taunt with a servant that doesn't qualify, but you have a female on the field, they'll just drain the taunted servant instead. So yeah, I handicapped myself needlessly in this fight. Because right off the bat, Mothman just lost a bunch of health. And um, the sisters gained a bunch from draining Mash and Bunyan. Funny stuff. So okay, so Medusa's shown up. She has one health bar, but it's quite a thick one. Uh, so you'll need to deal with her. Unfortunately, I draw a quick card. Which is what she's resistant to, so I don't expect to do that much damage. Anderson, by the way, great servant to pair with uh, the Emperor. He might blow up from Medusa being on the board, but for the most part, I think you'll get quite a lot of value out of him. Here he gets Charmed, which triggers... yes. Uh, triggers that retaliatory mechanic. Real tragic. Okay, great hand here. I'm able to pop Amadeus' Star Dump. Uh, the Arts buff is more or less wasted. 
running Atlas again. Atlas is great for fights like these. Now, fun fact, I initially tried to do a bunch of uh, first Asan solo attempts for this fight. Unfortunately, it really was not working. Like, it worked decently well up through Medusa, and even... He was even able to take out Uriel under the right circumstances. Unfortunately, I find out that Steno is a fucking crit machine. Like, he can actually DPS Steno just fine, even with her Buster buff, because if you bust her Brave Chain into her, she'll still take a ton of damage. But she just wore him down with crits over the course of a fight. Like, you could still use First Asan. He is male, I think, but he has extremely high charm resistance. So if you build a team around him and sort of screen for him, you can actually do a fair bit of damage. But solos, as far as I can tell, were... Not really working out for me. Like, maybe if you have a Grail first design, you could do it, but with my setup, I wasn't able to get it to work. There are two other servants that have, like, anti charm passives. Ashwatthaman is just straight up immune, and so is Kama. Kama, I don't know how well she'd work here, because you'd have to plow through Medusa somehow. Which, you know, class advantage against that 100% quick resist. I don't know how that'd work out. Ashwatthaman you'd have to screen for, but I think he could do it. Because he has both Buster and Quick cards to leverage against the uh, various servants here. Smile of the Steno? Yes, as you can see, it, it can actually insta-kill servants. And... I had a lot of trouble keeping my bronzes alive in some of my test runs. Thankfully, uh, I recognized that and decided to pop uh, George's um, guts. Unfortunately, here the fight slows down a fair bit, because now I have both George and Anderson eating my hands. It's really the sort of finicky part of using the Emperor is that you really want external star support, but at the same time, you also want him to Brave Chain, so it's, uh, you know, it's a bit of a love-hate thing going on there. Anderson, though, definitely, um, pulling his weight. Let's see. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, Steno has a break effect. Well, actually, it's not a, it's not specific to Steno, it's like, depending on how many of the Gorgon sisters have their bars broken. So if it's just Theno, or if it's just one, they summon Medusa, and if it's both, they actually gain an effect that um, increases Theno and Uriel's uh, debuff success chance, and also gives them damage against charmed allies. So yeah, just be advised if you're running... Um, Servants that are vulnerable to charms, you could be taking quite a bit of damage. As for the kill order, I settled on popping Uriel's bar, taking out Medusa, taking out Uriel, and then finishing off Steno. Obviously, this does put you in the position of slugging it out with Steno, but the Emperor is actually fairly well equipped for that because of his uh, ruler class. So he's taking substantially less damage from these trades. <laughs> What is a little inconvenient, though, is the fact that the enemies do, in fact, have uh, card type resistances. Meaning you're strongly discouraged from running, like, AQA chains into Medusa and stuff like that. It can be very difficult to build additional resources for the Emperor because of that. And obviously, actually finishing off Uriel is ridiculously hard, because you can't actually, like, go AQA. And actually, like, expect to get mileage out of your arts cards. And because you're so dependent on Mothman's NP, you have to be a little careful about how you time them. Because if you're trying to DPS Uriel, you won't be gaining much in the way of resources. What I settled on was actually to target Steno after I've worn down Uriel because that'll let me start spamming his NP. The NP is mostly relevant against... Well, yeah, it's mostly relevant against Uriel. You don't have to really worry about uh, Smile of the Steno when you're using the Emperor. 
Here, I decided to just YOLO it and see what happens. Because I want to conserve that invuln if I absolutely can. I'm getting a lot of good crits here. You know, I gave it some thought. I'm actually not quite sure how you would do this fight with a bronze attacker. Because I, I sort of looked through my roster, a lot of the decent candidates in other situations are, you know, female, like, um... Well, she's not bronze, but if you look at, like, Mecha Ellie and Mecha Ellie Mark II... Actually, are they female? Hold on. <laughs> Let me check that real quick. You know, they're robots. Okay, yes, they count as female. Yeah, real unfortunate. Mecha Ellie would have been quite good against, um... Medusa and Steno. Obviously, you need someone else to finish off your reel, but I think it's doable at that point. Because, again, even with the uh, Buster Resist, if you bust your Brave Chain into Steno, she will melt. I think I was in a position where, like, three Buster Brave Chains from First Asan would have actually finished off Steno's second bar. Yeah, so this is the point where I realized that I can actually finish off Uriel more or less at my leisure. Unfortunately, though, one thing that you do have to watch out for is the fact that both of them can actually drain you. So here, I decide to go for Broke. I get the charge, which also heals me. Pop CDR, of course. And then go for an NP Arts, Bra uh, NP Arts Brave Chain. Because I realize that if I take out Uriel, it's actually going to make it a lot harder for me to finish off Steno. But I'm not necessarily on like a hard timetable. And I also don't have to worry about getting charmed, so popping both of their bars is not an issue for me. So I decided to actually start wearing down Steno at this point. Doing reasonable damage even without crits. Health situation is not great, but assuming I don't get too many unlucky crits, I should be fine. Stuns haven't really been working out for me this fight. Thankfully though, it, it's a double-sided effect, so I still gain something from using it. And there we go, bar break. I believe this is the point where I decide to use, um, the invuln. I'll have to see. Oh yeah, definitely now. Yeah, there's the vampirism. Yeah, good thing I sat on it, because otherwise I would have been SOL. Despite those enticing buster cards, I decide, yeah, okay. They're not actually going to do that much damage against Theno here, so I'm going to... I'm gonna stick to my bread and butter. AQA. It also occurred to me that if you're... If you're in the position of having, like, a really solid main attacker, uh, you could just borrow a second attacker to finish off either Sten or Uriel, depending on what strat you go with. I've seen a lot of uh, Enkido runs of this. Apparently he's quite good at this. Okay, so yeah, at this point, I decide that I need to get Uriel to, like, a hit away from death. Because 111k is pushing it, and it's a good thing I did, because I am not able to deal that whole amount in one turn. Yeah, that and I was relatively close to a full meter anyway, so that worked out for me. I didn't need to AQA. And now that she's at 6k, Uriel's not really a problem. This is a situation where actually not taking her out worked in my favor because once th once Steno's alone in the field, she'll get pretty she'll get pretty handsy with the crits. 
土地の狭間にいて人はかくあるべしとここに新たなる乗り物 You know here's something I thought about Isn't isn't he supposed to not have his hat on when you NP with his first ascension? I wonder if they'll ever add a setting to fix that. I had sort of a similar issue with uh, Lancer Raiko. You know, I dig the uniform look, but uh, she insists on stripping. I don't know what to say. Here, I'm trying to figure out where the, whether I need the extra health to actually stay alive, but I decide not to because I don't want to get drained. Yeah, so I opt to chance it with uh, 6.5k. Against normal attacks, that's fine, but if Steno crits me, that's gonna be rough. Ooh, that was close. That was fucking close. Okay, so... Normally... I would just take the Guts Pop here and NP next turn to fend off NPs. But because of their relative health values and the fact that Steno doesn't have a damaging NP, I decide to do the other thing, NP immediately. And just lay into Steno. Because next turn I can still build stars against Yuria, because she's at low health, so I can hit her with pretty much whatever chain I want. Nice crit there. Okay, now they're both pretty much one turn away from death. On that account, I have it won. Resource-wise, it's going to turn out to be a relatively close run, but I also brought a bunch of servants that actively hindered me. <laughs> so, you know, take that as you will. A very messy run, but I think it was a good showcase of this fight's mechanics. Well, you know, aside from the part where I just didn't get charmed. Like most of the fight. And there we go. Actually, no. What? Why'd I say that? Amazingly enough, Steno just spams skills and does not actually finish me off, meaning I actually had another turn. I actually had another buffer, although charm, I'm sorry, stun misses yet again. But yeah, um, Steno's finished at this point. I can hit her with pretty much anything and get the job done. So yeah, like if you liked the video, or if you found it helpful, subscribe for more. And I will uh, see you next time. Have a good one, everyone. Peace.